Welcome to section 9.4a. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, we're going to introduce the concept of the specific heat capacity. And so this is slightly different from the molar heat capacity, which we talked about in our last lecture. When I put this qualifier specific on here, that means that I'm going to be talking about grams of material instead of moles of material. So the specific heat capacity is the amount of energy that I need to put into some substance divided by the gram of that substance, and I just want to change the temperature by one degree Kelvin. So what you guys can see is specific heat capacity is going to be abbreviated with a capital C, and it is equal to just what I stated, the amount of heat over the grams over the change in temperature. So let's say I go into lab and say I take 50 grams of water and I want to go ahead and raise it by that one degree Kelvin and it takes me 209 joules of energy to do this process. So let's go ahead and calculate the specific heat capacity of liquid water. So my specific heat capacity equals the amount of energy that I needed to change a certain amount of material, in this case it was 50 grams, by one degree Kelvin. And so if I go ahead and calculate this out, this is 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. Now note that this is gonna be for liquid water. If I change the phase of the material, the specific heat capacity is going to be different. So if I use steam or ice, they have separate specific heat capacities. So let's go ahead and see if we can use this concept. Go ahead and tell me the amount of heat that I need with the conditions that I've prefaced in this problem. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and start off with talking about the definition of the specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity is the energy, and the way that I'm gonna provide energy is through heat over some quantity over some change in temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and rearrange this formula to the one that you will see on your information page. And that is Q equals MC delta T. Now this is the way that the relationship is often presented to you. So let's go ahead and plug in our values. So we had 250 grams of water, and I relayed to you guys the specific heat capacity. It is 4.18 joules per gram Per Kelvin. And then I wanted to change the temperature from 22 degrees to 98 degrees. So let's go ahead and first try to do this in Kelvin. So if I put my delta temperature, which is going to be T final minus T initial, what I would go ahead and say is that my final temperature is 98 degrees Celsius plus 273 to change that into Kelvin. Now I'm going to subtract that from 22 degrees Celsius plus 273 to change it into Kelvin. But what you guys will see is that I'm adding 273, and then if I distribute this negative sign, well, that means I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 273. So the 273s actually cancel out. And so if I look at this, what this becomes is 98 degrees Celsius minus 22. Here's one of the relationships that I want you guys to know. The change in temperature in Kelvin is going to equal the change in temperature in degrees Celsius. So this is the only place where you can use Kelvin and temperature interchangeably. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put 98 minus 22 for my change in temperature. And even though this is in degrees Celsius, it will still cancel out with that Kelvin. Again, it only works when you're doing a change in temperature. If it's just T without the delta, you cannot do this cancellation. So in here, my grams also cancel out, and then I get my answer, which is 7.9 times 10 to the fourth joules. So make sure you guys know all the little nuances and be careful to watch not only your sign, but also the units so everything comes out just fine. Okay, gentle people, let's move on to our next topic, and that is gonna be thermal equilibrium.
What this has to do is when you bring two objects in contact with each other that have different temperatures. Now, what thermal equilibrium means is that when you do this, when you have two objects that are touching each other, they're going to go ahead and reach the same temperature. And so that means that energy is gonna go from one object to the other, meaning it will always flow from the hotter object to the cooler object. Now, this should make sense if I have a pot of boiling water and I stick my hand in there, the energy is going to transfer from the boiling water to my hand until they reach the same temperature. We don't live in a universe where heat is going to be transferred from my hand to the boiling water and my hand gets colder. Now, this energy transfer that I have between any two objects is going to continue until they reach that same temperature. So what we say is that Objects that increase in temperature gained thermal energy, and objects that got cooler, well, that means that they lost thermal energy. So let's go ahead and do a little thought experiment. Let's say that I have a beaker of water, and my beaker of water is at 21 degrees, and there's 225 grams of water in it. I'm going to drop in a chunk of very hot metal. The metal, let's say, is 55 grams worth of iron, and it is at a temperature of 99.8 degrees. Now, let's pretend that this is my whole universe. Now, if I go ahead and drop that chunk of metal into the water, what's going to happen? So let's go ahead and talk about what happens in this scenario. What I know is that when I put these two objects together, that they are going to come to the same temperature. They're going to reach thermal equilibrium. If that's the case, I know that the water is going to have to gain energy because it's not as hot as the metal. So if my water is going to gain thermal energy, that means it's going to have a positive sign for its heat. Now the metal is hotter, so that means it's going to lose thermal energy. So that means its sign is going to be negative. Now let's go ahead and remember the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics says I can't create nor destroy energy. So what I'm gonna say to you guys is that if my water is gaining heat and my metal is losing heat, well, the amount of heat that my water gained has to come from my metal. And the heat that the metal loses has to go somewhere. And if my entire universe is these two objects, it has to go into the water. So these two have the opposite signs, but are in equal magnitude. Or in other words, the first law of thermodynamics says is if you add up all the heat transfers in your universe, they should equal zero. Any heat that object one loses has to be gained by any other object in my universe. Similarly, if object one gains heat, then it has to come from some other object in my universe. All right, gentle people, so let's work the math out to this thing. Here are the specific heats of iron and water, and note these are the conditions, the temperature and the mass. Go ahead and calculate that temperature once they've reached thermal equilibrium. All right, gentle people, anytime we start a problem where we're putting two objects at different temperature together and they reach thermal equilibrium, we should write down the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law of thermodynamics says Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 dot, dot, dot. So any heat transfer that I have in my system, if I add up all the heat transfers, they have to equal zero. Let's go ahead and talk about anything that has this thermal transfer. And so the first thing we have is we have our water. It's going to gain energy from my hot metal. The other thing we have is we have our metal. Our metal is going to cool down. Here are the only two things that are transferring heat. And so summing up their heat transfers should equal zero. So now let's go ahead and see how we can figure out heat. Well, we just talked about that formula. That's going to be Q equals M C delta T, where all of this is in respect to water. 
and we still have m c delta t where all of this is in respect with the metal and adding these two up will get us zero so let's go ahead and plug in values so the mass of my water was 225 grams the specific heat of my water was 4.18 joules per gram per degree celsius and then finally my delta t so it's the final temperature minus the initial temperature now i don't know what my final temperature is that's what i'm trying to figure out but i know my water was originally at 21 degrees celsius now let's go ahead and do everything for our metal so my metal had a mass of 55 grams my metal is iron so i can go ahead and put its specific heat and then finally i can put its temperature chain now i don't know its final temperature but note that the water and the metal they're going to come to the same final temperature that's what thermal equilibrium means so i'm going to put tf here and remember this tf and this tf they're the same tf they are both coming to the same final temperature and then finally, my metal started out at 99.8 degrees. And all of this equals zero due to the first law of thermodynamics. Now, what you guys will see is you have one equation, one variable. So it's up to you to use algebra to solve this. You can do it however you feel comfortable. Uh, my suggestion here is what you guys can do is you guys can combine this value right here which turns out to be 940.5 TF minus 21.0. And you can combine this value right here, which turns out to be 24.75. And you can put the rest of the formula after this. Now what you guys can do is you guys can distribute this out and then you guys can solve for TF. You guys can solve for TF and what you should get is that TF, the final temperature, should be 23.02 degrees Celsius. So this should have been choice B for you guys on the quiz. All right, gentle people, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1B.